Hi everyone, I'm Dan Harding and welcome to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. There's a lot of excitement going on in the docks right now, a lot of hustle, wax, polish, prim, the boats are starting to look good, there's a lot of people running around with last second getting their displays ready. So you can tell already there's a buzz about this show. Huge crowds coming into town, people are already flocking the streets trying to get in. Yeah, we have to stay on our toes. We were able to sneak in to give you guys a quick preview of what the show is looking like. So, without further ado, let's go take a look. All right, first boat we're coming up against is the new newest model from Jaguar Marine. If you've been reading the magazine, you read Simon Murray's story about John Clark, who might be the most interesting boat builder of all time. This is his newest debut. 37 OS looking fierce. Race boat hull. Race boat technology, but this boat's gonna be more aimed at the consumer market. The 400 horsepower Mercury is on the back. There's a lot of hustle going on right now as people are getting ready and trying to get these boats polished. Right here we have another celebrity sighting in the Benito Grand Trawler 62. We're we'll gonna be taking a closer look at this boat later in the show. Alan Harper was able to get aboard in France. This is a whole new line of yacht for Group Benito. Kind of picking up where the Swift Trawler line ends and really late, looking to take things to a whole nother level. Nice positioning there actually next to Swift Trawler. Stay tuned for more on that. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people stopping right here on the docks to take a look at this one from Fountain. There's always a number of new debuts from Benito. A couple new GTs that we're lucky to get aboard on in Annapolis. So you may have seen those already, especially this one, an old friend in the Benito GT45. One of the many hallmarks of this boat, I don't know if you can really tell, is the size of that back windshield that opens up. It makes it a very open boat. Let's see what else we can find. You know, he's got a couple of exciting new models up their sleeve, including a new line of adventure yacht that we reported on earlier. Find some renderings of that on our social media. We've also been investing a lot in the, in the leader and flyer series of center consoles and, and day boats, hoping to bring more people into the, into the family, maybe eventually ending up with that grand trawler we saw earlier. We have another friend here in the uh, Cruisers 34 GLS. This is the newest model from the builder, and we were fortunate enough to actually see it out in Wisconsin. Feels much more appropriate here under the Florida sun. Uh, let's, see, let's see if we can take a closer look. Gotta get me driving here. <laughs> That's it. Everyone's got jokes. It's a really beautiful day yacht. It's really looking nice on the Florida sun. Nice sun pad area forward. A really impressive lineup. This is interesting. The uh, we were told by the team at Cruisers that these all blacked out Cruisers models are really popular. We got the 42 GLS. It's, it's a striking look, that's for sure, especially the Mercury 600s on the back. That'll get a lot of attention. Feels like a hot boat to me, literally and, well, physically, but to each their own. Coming across, really just wandering around here, so bear with me. Coming into the Regal display, a lot of new models coming out. Bigger and bigger boats with outboard power. This is a brand to watch, and we're going to be reporting more on some of these new debuts in an upcoming issue. I think so. It has a slot 
family owned company here in Florida. We've been really seeing this brand get some serious popularity up in New England. And this, this is the market that we're really coming into now is this line of outboard powered flybridge cruisers. These boats are really looking better and better. This, this is the 42 fly. I believe this is the newest model to come out from the builder that's debuting here at the show. It's kind of amazing how fast the trend of outboard powered flybridge cruisers has become. I guess that's a natural, natural progression. Talking to a number of, friend, of friends in the industry, and popular consensus seems to be that the shows will be absolutely mobbed this year, especially when it comes time for the weekend. You know, Newport saw record crowds, the Annapolis Boat Show saw record crowds. So we anticipate that to continue. Looking across at Sea Ray, I believe that's the 370 outboard that we reported on it. Really a, a whole new look for the Sea Ray lineup. Very distinct. Of course, with the Mercury Power. Now both on land and on water, Intrepid always has a huge display. Big news out of this company was the recent acquisition by Marine Max. Really interesting to see where this company goes from here. It was already becoming more and more popular in recent years and doing really well actually in the super yacht tender market. Let's see if we find this the 477 that Charlie Levine reported on. That's new at the show this year. Some celebrity sightings at the Nordhaven. Selling like hotcakes and has been their pearl yachts here in attendance. A couple new boats coming out of that factory in the near future. I don't know what this is, but it looks like it's something out of Star Wars perhaps. It's a wild looking Valletto. That AC is running overtime. Here, as usual, one we're particularly interested in over there is the PC60. Always interesting to see what they do with that massive amount of space that comes with the power cat. Vanquish always is the, the, the craziest color schemes, it really helps. The Crazy thing, things kick off here tomorrow. Good, buenos días. 
Kind of like building a, a small city here with power, water, getting generators and displays set up. Blue Game making a big debut here. A number of their larger models. Got some of their smaller boats over at Newport. Part of the San Lorenzo family. This, this is a brand to watch. This is the Blue Game BGX70. Behind all the construction, take my word for it. Princess has a new Y72 coming out of this show. You guys have a number of boats. This also looks like one of our first opportunities, at least mine, to physically get aboard the X95. Alan Harper reported on this boat and we previewed it and blew it up on social media, but this is the most striking departure we've seen from Princess Yachts in a long time, considering they even have a 35 foot foiling boat. Got some waving, that's nice. Hey guys. thing is different. We'll be back. Sunseeker with a number of new models. Same goes for Azimut. Most notably the 42 Verve. Just looks like that's this one straight ahead. Nice to see, they, see them continue to develop this line. I think it's do really well in the U.S. These boats are hard to hold on to. That is a really nice sharp color scheme. And prestige, kind of similar to the to the Princess X95. Really interested to get aboard the X70. Again, reported on that model. The story by Kevin Koenig. But courtesy of the pandemic, we haven't gotten the chance to get aboard. Hopefully we'll rectify that in a little bit. Shoy Lee has a number of new yachts in production. Most notably, let's see the X96. Continue on, a couple of new models from Ocean Island and Sander as well. Is a 30 and 35 meter debuting. It's funny how a couple years ago I feel like not that many people knew Galleon, but quickly becoming a household name. And we got two models coming out from Absolute at this show. 60 Fly, you see right in front of me. These huge windows. There's also a 48 coupe. We're gonna take a closer look at those first thing tomorrow. That is an amazing amount of glass. Must be some views from the inside. Well guys, we're getting to, I'm running, I'm running out of dock space down here. So we're gonna tune out for now. But stay tuned here and pmymag.com for all your boat show updates.